All this is Dr. Mubin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So for a long time, cool beans have been asking me that we need to see a study about unvaccinated individuals who may have become infected and then reinfected. And the question is, what would happen when the reinfection occurs again in unvaccinated in individuals? And what is the severity and, and what is the incidence and so on? That is the study today. It is from Qatar. It's a beautiful study. I love it. Number one. Number two, we did this study a few days ago. That is from Veterans Affairs Hospital from U.S., which discussed the reinfection and the severity of the long COVID type symptoms or hospitalization and critical uh, events. And I also saw that there was a lot of back and forth happening around the interwebs where people are talking with each other. One, one is saying, well, the Qatari study doesn't make sense. The other one is saying the U.S. study doesn't make sense. And some is saying, well, why are you discussing the U.S. study over Qatari and so on? So there is a lot of back and forth. And actually, I would discuss today, it is incorrect to compare these two studies. They are both different kind of studies. And then they both are in countries that are different dem that have different demographics so let's start i think you would really be excited this is a study of unvaccinated individuals so that is the most important thing to keep in mind and here is a good news if this video i think it this video is something that many people should see if this video get 10000 likes what i will do is I will do another Qatari study in comparison to this Qatari study that looks at the vaccine efficacy, which can then be compared to the natural infection efficacy. Let's do this. So here are our gifts for humanity. These are continuing. References are here. This is drbean.com. And here is a link. This link is actually pinned to this talk as well and it is present in the description too this is a one-time fee for youtube members only and look at the price you would never have this price for 900 medical lectures and this is not a recurring fee it's just one time then this is qatar's um, statistics this is the death rates in qatar uh, Suffice it to say that very tiny number of deaths, I think 649 or so total deaths, and the population is small as well, 2.6 or 2.8 million, I believe. And population is generally young as well. So I think average age is 30 years or so. And this is the study that we're going to talk about, duration of immune protection of SARS-CoV-2 natural infection against reinfection in Qatar. But it is important to keep in mind, this is only in the unvaccinated it does, they ejected everyone who got vaccinated. And I saw people fighting with each other on Twitter saying, well, Qatar is 90% vaccinated. In this study, they ejected anyone who became vaccinated. This is the study's PDF. We'll go through that. And this is the Veterans Affairs Hospital or, or this person, Zaid Al Ali, from there. This is that study that we discussed a few days ago. I actually sent an email to Dr. Zaid Al Ali asking him that the control group in here, in this study, the US study, which is about, the control group was about 5.4 million people. Did that have vaccination or not? Okay, so let's start. Quick data points for these two studies comparison before we actually go over the Qatari study. Number one, the Qatar's study is only looking at unvaccinated individuals, one. U.S. study looks at unvaccinated and vaccinated, one shot, two shot, three shot or more, and one infection, two infection, three infection or more. Qatar's study only looks at one infection after the previous infection or after no infection, two infection. Qatar study looks at two basic measures. One is what is the incidence of COVID? Meaning they have, let's say, 
100 people here and 100 people here, all unvaccinated. And now they're comparing them to say these 100 people had, and I know that I'm not sharing screen. I just want to make sure that we have the summary in front of us, and then we'll go to the drawing. So the, these 100 people here, let's say they are previously infected. So keep in mind, previously infected and survived. That is why they're part of this study. They already have a an immune system, a body that they survived. So there is already a filter that has occurred. Those who did not survive are not participant in reinfection study anyways. Correct? So on 100 people, let's say, which were infected and now are able to be observed again for reinfection. And then another 100 people unvaccinated who were never infected, or at least they did not know that they were infected. And the Qatar study then observed these two cohorts to see the incidence of infection. That is how many people got infected in one group versus the other group. I saw people fighting with each other to say that Qatar has better uh, protocols non-pharmaceutical protocols, meaning uh, contact tracing and masking and social distancing and those things, better than U.S. The point is, don't compare Qatar to U.S. Look at Qatar's cohort, both cohorts, unvaccinated plus an infection, unvaccinated only. Within the Qatar's norms, they both are both groups are exposed to the similar behaviors. So there is no problem with how well or not well Qatar does with the non-pharmaceutical uh, um, interventions. They actually do very well. U.S. study does not look at the incidence. It does not look at how many people get infected. U.S. study actually looks at when somebody becomes infected, then what kind of symptoms do they develop? How many symptoms do they develop? How long those symptoms stay? And what is the severity? That's a very different comparison. They cannot be compared. Incidents cannot be compared to type of symptoms. There is just one part that can be compared, and that is severity, protection from severity. And Qatar study said that somebody who is infected previously, they have a great protection from reinfection or from severe infection for months after, for years. They, they use the word years. So if you are unvaccinated and had had the infection, if you look at yourself from the Qatar's studies point of view, or if you're in Qatar, for years, even up to three years, you're protected. They didn't have the data for three years. They extrapolated it beyond 14 months. The U.S. study did not look at that kind of interpolation. U.S. study said severity chances are double than non-reinfection. So that is where these two studies go separate ways for the similar measure. But then you can look at the demographics and say, well, these are different. Secondly, in Qatar, the demography is the whole population. In the U.S., the study had the demographics of the Veterans Affairs Hospital, those people who were coming in outpatient or inpatient or refills. They have a different demographic than a healthy 30 years old. So their measures are different. U.S. study looks at presence of the symptoms after 30 days. Because they believe that by 30 days, the long COVID symptoms should have gone away. And if there are symptoms after 30 days, they consider them to be long COVID, which is totally fine. The Qatar study starts observing after 90 days so that the long COVID symptoms, if present, have gone. So they consider that 90 days and after, if there is symptoms, that must be a new infection. Very different definitions with both of them. So first request. Qatar study has shown very good data, very promising data. I think if I can read one of their paragraphs, and I'll read it to you, they have reached a point of saying that Omicron 
has almost become like other coronaviruses in its behavior. And what is that? And again, I'll read it to you. They said, for the mild infection, there is no protection. Just like other common cold viruses that cause common cold every year. However, for severe infection, there is protection. And they said this is also a similar pattern with vaccine as well. So beautiful study. Let's start. So I've spent a lot of time looking at this for you today. My request to you is please share it with, with others. Okay, let's start. So these are our gifts for humanity. This is page 14. I'm actually starting in the middle of the studies documentation to kind of create a context for what are we really looking at. So page 14, they say, despite waning protection against reinfection, this is Qatar's study. Strikingly, there was no evidence for waning of protection against severe COVID-19 at reinfection. This one statement is, this is it. You can actually stop the discussion now and, and you can have tea or something. There was no evidence for waning of protection against severe COVID-19 at reinfection. This remained about 100% even 14 months after the primary infection. Even 14 months after the primary infection. Had you heard of this before from others? With no appreciable effect for Omicron immune evasion in reducing it. So those folks who have very dramatically appeared nowadays to say, wow, we have a problem, Omicron has escaped. Here, and this study had data, I believe, up to June. So anyway, the Omicron data. So here, with no appreciable effect for Omicron immune evasion in reducing it. So what they're saying is against the severe outcomes, the protection even after 14 months does not wane. And do you know there is another interesting thing? 14 months before there was no Omicron, that was Delta or others. So 14 months later, the protection from a previous infection to the new one is actually in fact from a previous variant to Omicron. This pattern also mirrors that of vaccine immunity, which wanes rapidly, vaccine immunity wanes rapidly against, re -inf against infection, but is durable against severe COVID-19, regardless of variant. Although nowadays we're seeing that even that part is falling apart. Okay, this is one very, very interesting discussion. Then they say, infection with common, co th this is worth reading, rereading, and absorbing. This is such a remarkable uh, observation that they have here. And please remember, it is not just Qatar's teams. It is actually Wheel Cornell University's Qatar, Qatar uh, uh, branch, if you will, where researchers have worked with that. So it is New York's team plus Qatar's team plus other countries. So it's a good team that were worked on it. Infection with common cold coronaviruses. So now they're talking about other cold viruses. And perhaps influenza induces only a year-long immunity against reinfection. Meaning common colds occur every year. Fine. But lifelong immunity against severe infection. So I would not put influenza in it, but coronaviruses, yes. We all, almost 86% of the population have them. They don't cause severe infection. Authors, the researchers are reaching that point to say Omicron has reached there. To what extent this pattern reflects waning in biological immunity or immune evasion with virus evolution over the glo global season is unclear. So they said we'll see more patterns. Above results, their results, suggest that SARS-CoV-2 may exhibit a similar pattern to that of common cold coronavirus within a few years. Short-term biological immunity against reinfection of three-year 
may decline as a result of viral evolution and immune evasion. Why did they use the word three years? Because that is what their study showed. Protection from a previous natural infection in unvaccinated individuals. Why am I continuing to say unvaccinated? Because the study is for unvaccinated individuals. And it is interesting that the people who are fighting with each other, they're, they're totally forgetting that this, this study is not for vaccinate. The Veterans Affairs Hospital study includes vaccinated individuals. This does not. So we have to acknowledge what kind of study it is. So they say, so the, in the unvaccinated individuals who got infected once in Qatar, then up to three years, they have protection. And then they are saying, the researchers are saying, well, it is possible that if the virus continued to evolve, maybe within three years, it would have evolved past that. We'll see. Then they say, however, the lasting immunity against severe reinfection will contribute to a pattern of benign infection. I love this. Okay, let's continue. Now I'm going to present to you the summary. And I'll present this summary at the end as well. Summary. Non-severe reinfection. So let's back up for a second. What are the cohorts? There are two main cohorts that they had. Both of them unvaccinated. One were people who are unvaccinated and were infected. The other one were people that were unvaccinated and at least were not known to be infected. If in these two groups, anybody became vaccinated, they would immediately censor them. And these are matched cohorts. What does that mean is, imagine you are part of a group. Let's say you become infected, not vaccinated. And I am a, another group that is not infected and not vaccinated. Right? Now they match. So they have, let's say, half a million such people in both groups. They match them one to one. They find, all right, all right, Mubin has this age and this uh, comorbidities, etc. So let's match them to someone in the other group. If I go and get vaccine, then they would eject me from the study plus my pair from the other side as well. This is how clean the study is of the vaccination side. And the people who were arguing it seemed to me that they didn't even read the studies. They just went off of the titles and started fighting with each other. Anyways, back here. Non-severe reinfection. This is now pre-Omicron type, pre-Omicron era infection. And then the incidence of reinfection. Incidence is, will this person become reinfected or not? And if so, this group, what is the percentage? What is the rate of reinfection? Compared to pre-Omicron infection and Omicron reinfection, compared to uninfected and unvaccinated. And here is what they found. This is very interesting. What they found was, pre-infection, pre-Omicron time, if somebody was infected with one variant, they had protection from other variants for 85.5% from reinfection. Unvaccinated, got infected. Now they have protection against the reinfection, 85.5%. The peak of protection was seven month, 90.5%. So unvaccinated individual became infected. They have the protection and the peak of the protection reaches at seven months. Let me keep saying in Qatar. Assume it is in Qatar because it is a st study of Qatar. So seven months, 90.5% protection. We call nowadays, we have other products as well that are trying to offer protection. 
and their protection is just disappearing within two months. So seven months later, then 16 months later, about 70% protection. 22 months later, almost two years, 50% protection. And 32 months later, almost three years, 10, less than 10% protection. It went up to 14 to 16 months by data, and then the rest they did extrapolation. So even if you just consider up to 14 months, 70, 80% efficacy of previous infection to the new infection. And this is unfair to say, well, they are 90% vaccinated. This study does not include vaccinated people. This is also unfair to say that their operating procedures are different. Well, no, within their own society, the procedures are the same for everyone. Okay, then the second group, which is even more interesting. This is somebody who became infected in pre-Omicron time, was unvaccinated, stayed unvaccinated, and then became reinfected, but in Omicron time. The protection from the previous one, for let's say, for example, Delta, was actually lesser than if it was Alpha to Delta or Beta to Delta. What was the protection? 38.1%. Almost, almost two-third less protection. This is just cases we're talking about. We're not talking about severity. Severity protection was almost 100% in all cases. We're talking about reinfection. And about one and a 1.25 years later, or 15 months later, the protection from cases or reinfection waned and went down to 10%. And I'll give you a teaser, which I promise that I'll do that comparison if we have 10,000 likes on this one. And that is Qatar's, there is a fresh study recently that came out of Qatar, which shows that the vaccine efficacy after the primary series goes down less than 10% after third month. Can you imagine that? Okay, so here, 1.25. And I would, because I'm talking about vaccine as well, I would remind you that the vaccine's efficacy against severe outcome is still excellent. And now if you said, hey, how about severe outcomes with the reinfection here? Let's look at that. Protection against severe, critical, or fatal reinfection. 97.3% efficacy. That is, somebody who is unvaccinated, got infected, will become reinfected now. The protection from severe cases is 97.3% or efficacy of protection. Now, again, we have to give this data over here that one, they are younger population. Their total number of deaths are 614 throughout this pandemic. They're a small population, 2.8 million. Then the first infection, if somebody was really frail and fragile, the first if infection may have already killed them. So they are not participant in this cohort to look at the reinfection with severity. So the cohort that is left to be participating is generally, I would believe, healthier. So this is expected. This should be expected and this should be expected everywhere. Although the authors say that our data may not be generalizable, just like I would say that our Veterans Affairs Hospital study is also not generalizable even within the US because of the demographics there. Anyways. 95% confidence interval for the protection from severe, 94.9% to 98.6. And for this is over 14 months. Within the 14 months, protection stayed at 100% almost. Meaning somebody unvaccinated became infected at least for 14 months within if they're living in Qatar or they are part of that Qatar demographics. For 14 months, they have protection from severe outcome, hundred almost 100% protection. 
So this data, when you look at that, authors say that, hey, if you look at this data, this seems to be a very similar pattern of a normal human coronavirus where they can cause infection, common cold, but they usually do not become severe. This virus is going in that pattern. And I've been saying it for two years. It's not new for me or the cool beans. And this is a reminder that our gifts are continuing. <laughs> I just copy pasted it twice. So here it is once more. Then some more details of this study. We are basically done. This is the um, this is the study. So if you wanted to just hear the summary part, which is 25 minutes long, then we're done. Now let's go a little more in depth. What they did was they may they conducted three studies, three matched retrospective cohort studies. And matched meaning they were people who were matched in both studies. And if one is censored, then the other one is censored as well. They took one cohort that was previously infected, unvaccinated, another that stayed un uninfected and unvaccinated. And why were they doing this study? A very interesting question. Why were they doing this study? They This is their point of view. They said, we are seeing that the COVID vaccines have done a great job of helping us navigate through this pandemic. But they're saying that it seems like vaccines are not able to stay up to speed to continue to help. So they said vaccines cannot shape the future outcomes correctly. So we went back to the drawing board to see that those who were infected and were not vaccinated, what's happening to them? What is their situation? Where is the virus going with them? And this is why they said we wanted to do this study to observe them, those who are not vaccinated, because those who are vaccinated are also reaching the point of no efficacy from the cases. And then they also said that we are observing that seasonal coronaviruses can cause mild disease, but not severe. So is this virus reaching that point as well? So then they said, all data in this study, 2.8 million population of uh, uh, Qatar, and 11 point some percent is actually the native Qatari folks. The rest is all foreigners. All data was included in the study since the pandemic. Qatar actually has a very beautiful system. I mean, they're, they're a rich country with less people. So they have a lot of money to spend on building and creating processes. Then they say, as soon as the vaccine dose was received, the matched pair was censored. This is this. So here, look, we sought to answer three questions of relevance to the future of this pandemic. Number one, when infected with a pre-micron variant, how long does protection persist against reinfection with pre-micron? So I discussed that before. Second, infected with pre-micron and what happens with Omicron? And the third one, when infected with any variant, how long does protection persist against severe, critical, or fatal infection? Now, these questions are very different from the Veterans Affairs Hospital study. They were trying to see what happens in terms of long COVID, what happens in, in terms of severity, how many kind of symptoms continue for six months after. That's a different study although severity part can be compared in between these two. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned this a couple of times. For exchangeability, both members of each match pair were censored on the date of first dose of vaccination of an individual in either cohort. So whoever got the vaccine, the match pair was ejected. And then they had some other reasons to eject people as well. And we saw this before. We saw this before. Now, I wanted to review a couple of things. Number one, page 11, there is a figure there. How about we look at this for a second? This is the Veterans Affairs study. Here, the Veterans Affairs study, US plus Washington University. They said, compared to those with the first infection, those with the reinfection, 
exhibit an increased risk of all cause mortality. Then if you see here in the second one, increased risk of hospitalization, all cause mortality was 2.14 times and hospitalization was about three times and so on. And then these are, look, these are the various uh, systems that had abnormalities beyond six months or up to six months. So really this study could be looked at that in the demographics of the US, in a higher age group with those kind of comorbidities, what is the chances of developing long COVID? The Qatari study was not answering that question. So here, this is the severity that they are saying. Qatar study, we saw this, that this severity, I read it to you. Cumulative incidence of severe, critical, or fatal COVID-19 was 0% for the primary infection and 0.21% for the infection naive. So this is a very interesting thing. So you must have this question in your mind that those folks in Qatar who are not vaccinated and are not infected, what is their risk of severity? That is 0.21%. Adjusted hazard ratio was 0.03%. But those who were unvaccinated and had become infected, what was their risk of fatal COVID outcome? 0%. And this is up to 14 months. Now, if I go to the figure, which was here, Page 11. So there, there are multiple studies here. So this is a <clears throat> study. So if you see here, what is interesting is to look at this part, for example. Here they're saying 1,806 reinfected with SARS-CoV-2, 433 PCR confirmed, 1,000 this. And look at this, 110,000. And this is out of 290,000. 110,000 censored because they received dose one. And you would see similarly over here in this group, 99,966 censored because they received dose one. So this is not even a study of discussing vaccines. This is non-vaccine individuals. Okay, back here. So some comparison, which I've been peppering throughout the discussion, I'm just going to quickly uh, go over them once more. Difference, Qatar study, veterans hospital study. Qatar population younger, U.S. different. It did say in the Qatar study, they said, we know that our population on average is younger. But what we did was we did a comparison, subgroup comparison of people 50 years and above, and they had the similar outcome. So you can actually read that in the document. So they said we did adjust. Still, comorbidities, demographics are different. Then in the Qatar, the whole population was participating in the v veterans hospital study. It was the study of those who were connecting with hospital for some reason. So there is already a difference in their health. Then Qatar study was more of an incidence of reinfection. An incidence of reinfection or first infection will be the same in the same society's operating systems. US's study or Veterans Affairs study was about multiple reinfections with or without vaccination and the lingering of the symptoms and severity of the symptoms for longer time, including severe COVID itself. So you can see they're really not comparable except the severity part. Qatar's Infection control is different than U.S. Yes, U.S.'s control is different than Qatar. And that is really not the comparison. So you, we should not pick up a 30 years old and compare that to a 70 years old. That's just would be incorrect. And 
those who are saying that that affects the severity, correct, that affects the severity. But within one society, the severity compared from one group to the other should not be different. So you are seeing that Qatar study does show severity changes, but that is within their own cohort, their, their own demographics. They're not comparing that to US. So these, all the numbers are valid for Qatar. Maybe they are generalizable for other countries too. Authors say that they are not. U.S. numbers are maybe more valid for the Veterans Affair cohort. I do not know if that is generalizable to the rest of the population. I would find it very hard to be able to make this generalizing statement that anybody who gets reinfected will have a severer outcome. I think that the Veterans Affairs study has a limit, which they mention it as well, and that is if somebody in their cohort got infected, but it was not severe enough, and they never came to the hospital, never tested, then they are not participant in that study. I think that could be hundreds and thousands of people. And because of their absence in counting, the rest of the result looks odd. Then Qatar study looked at the acute phase of the infection only. The Veterans Affairs study looks at acute phase and six months after. And then I think we, we should start thinking about Omicron being milder. So as much as I know that there are studies coming out, there are media, there are people who are saying that there is a issue I think Omicron compared to the previous one, and I presented data, forget about me thinking, I presented that data a couple of days ago. Yesterday, Paul Bork discussed that as well. The social measures were the same for Qatar's cohorts. We discussed that. Uh, US has different kind of comorbidities. Then Qatar looked at the incidence and severity, and US looked at the severity and the, and the continuity of this severity. So that is the discussion. Now, I'm gonna stop here. Now, the only thing left is to compare Qatar's unvaccinated population data to vaccinated data. That will be a very interesting study. So I'll see if I get some likes on this, this video, I will actually do that. And in addition to this, so I'm wrapping up, please like, subscribe, and share. If you don't want to do anything, then just share or just like, or just write a comment. That is one. Secondly, in the description of this video, there are some links. If you would like to support this work, there is a link to have access to Dr. Bean lectures only for $67. And that is a one-time fee. That's not a recurring fee. It is not a monthly fee. And it gives you access to about 900 lectures on drbean.com. Plus, we continue to make more lectures that are uploaded every week, and they are included in that price. So it is, it is almost free. It is free. So that is a link in there. If you would like to support it by becoming a patron, there is a link for that. If you do not like you, if you want to use PayPal, there is a link for that. If you do not like PayPal, then there is a link for buying me a coffee. You can also become a member of Dr. Bean's YouTube channel, or you can become a Substack member too. Thank you very much. And I would see you if there is a decent number of uh, views on this one, then I'll see you probably tomorrow or day after. Otherwise, I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye for now. Actually, I'll see you on the Cool Bean Cafe in a few minutes for our chit chat. And let's take our questions there. We'll discuss there.